Hello everyone, this is Jake from Fight Paranormal, and on this episode of The Five Files, I'm going to talk about the Spirit Box. Now, the Spirit Box, for those of you who are very unfamiliar with it, it's a hacked portable radio that, when you hit the scan button, it doesn't stop on a station, it's continuous. Um, a lot of versions of the Spirit Box, they have different scan rates, such as the PSV7 Spirit Box, which is probably the most used version of the spirit box it has 100 milliseconds 150 milliseconds 200 250 and then i think it goes up to 350 now for us in our personal opinion we only use 100 milliseconds the reason we do that is because any other sweep speed we've been able to pick up radio dj voices to the point to where we can make out what they're saying on air Obviously, on a paranormal investigation, this isn't what you want to happen. You want pure white noise to where, you know, you could hear like a quick little blip, but you can't make out what the DJs are saying. Now, some people, they do scan at like 150 or 200, and you know, that's fine. If that's what they want to do, that's cool. Um, it's just personally for us, that's not what we do. The Spirit Box, that's the, I've used a PSB 11, and the PSV7, those are the only two models that I have tried. And the PSB11 is supposedly an upgrade to the PSB7 because instead of just one radio scanning, it's basically two radio scanning at the same time. And they even have, it's kind of a cool feature where you can have one spirit box going at a certain speed, uh, you know, scanning forward and then the other spirit box the other radio part of the device it's a good size device and the other one the second you could have it at a different speed going in reverse and you know the theory with that is double the white noise double the energy for the spirits to be able to communicate and it might eliminate some of the radio contamination that way if you do get an intelligent response Ideally, it would either sync up into both channels, both radios, or it would be coming from just one and it would be, you know, a lot louder. I've only used it once, and in my personal opinion, I need to use it more before I can, you know, put an actual definitive thought on it because we tried it at the Exchange Hotel. We had one that was lent to us, and it was just really freaking loud. Which, you know, the PSP7 spare box, really any spare box, is loud to begin with. It's a very loud device. The PSP11, it just doubles the noise to the point to where it started hurting our ears a little bit, especially when you're in a small room and sound is kind of condensed. It just wasn't the world's greatest. Now, as for the white noise it generated... I do like that. I think that's a really cool part of the PSB11, but I'm wondering if you would get better results if you just did a regular PSB7 spirit box or, you know, just a one sweep spirit box and you had something close by to help, uh, you know, like a white noise generator or something to give the spirits that extra boost. That way you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, double the sweeps, double the noise, but you still get that energy. So the spirit boxes, there's a lot of different versions. There's Joe's box, there's Frank's box, uh, there's even many apps, which I've only tried one app before, and my personal opinion on the paranormal apps, I am not the biggest fan of them. I think there's too many factors at play that could mess with results. You know, it could pull from the internet, it could pull from a microphone, you know, mix up what you're saying and just you know, make it sound weird and distorted and then put it back out. There's just, in my opinion, too many factors at play. Um, now, that doesn't mean that they're not good. They're not credible because I've seen some videos online where people ask certain questions and there are intelligent responses that come back from these apps. It's just, you know, my personal tool, I wouldn't use one. So back to the spirit box, something that... I've really noticed is since we started using the spear box, we have gotten more EVPs than we usually do. And I've always wondered if, aside from just there's more energy for them to communicate with us, I wonder how it works in the spirit world. Because think about it like this. We ask them a question. 
and we say, hey, could you talk over the spirit box for us? You know, we'd love to hear your voice or something like that. How does the spirit choose whether to communicate through the voice recorder that's sitting next to the spirit box or the spirit box itself? You know, that's that's one of those questions we kind of can't answer, unfortunately, because there have been times we have asked questions such as um, St. Albans Sanatorium. We've had this happen a few times there where we've asked questions, hoping to hear something over the spirit box in real time, and we never heard anything. And so we assumed, oh, the spirits, you know, just didn't communicate with us or something like that. But upon evidence review, we found that we did get a response through EVP. And of course, the main thing about spirit box a lot of people hope for is that real time communication so that. You know, you know what spirit is in the room with you in the area. You can have a real time communication because if you're doing a regular EVP session, you're just going down a list of questions or really whatever comes off the top of your head. You don't really have a spirit's response, um, you know, to play off of. You know, if you ask, is anyone here with us? And you get a voice over the spirit box that says Frank, then, you know, to start a line of questioning of who Frank is, why he's here, and what his story is. As to where if you're just doing it with EVP, you can ask, hey, is anyone here? Followed by silence most of the time. And then you think of, okay, what are some spirits that are have been known to be in this area or in this room? And let me start that. So using the spirit box and using EVPs, I think they're both good. Um, you can't go wrong with either one. EVPs, I think, are more credible than spirit box clips, but when you get a full sentence or you get a spirit box recording that answers intelligently to your question, you know, it's really tough to beat that. But of course, with EVPs, I think there's less factors at play that could contaminate an EVP versus a response off the spirit box. So what are your thoughts on the spirit box and what types of spirit boxes have you used and what do you think is the most effective? I hope you all have enjoyed this short episode of The Five Files and have a great day, everyone.